It is around 6.30 on the morning of the 19th of July 2018 and mostly the streets of New York are calm and quiet. But the regular morning hustle and bustle around the 5th Avenue of Manhattan is soon to be interrupted. At 6.37 in the morning, a sudden release of energy explodes, shooting out into the air a raging plume of scalding hot steam infused with debris, mud and pieces of roadway. New York City has experienced yet another steam explosion. Today we're looking at the 2018 incident. My name is John and welcome to Plainly Difficult. This video wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for my YouTube, Patreon and Ko-fi members. If you want early access to the channel's videos and want to financially support the channel, then you can from just £1 per month. And as always, the links will be in the pinned comment below as well as my reverb for used studio gear, as well as my band camp for other merch, such as my disaster bingo card. Background. Our story begins way back to the beginnings of steam use in New York City. However, I do cover it in more detail in my other New York steam explosion which the video is linked to around here. New York has had a steam system since the 1880s and the system, after expanding and contracting over the years in the 2010s, network's operator Con Edison has close to 2,000 accounts and is in charge of 105 miles of steam main pipework. The company has five generating stations littered across the city. These provide the important source for the network steam, running at a pressure of up to 190 PSIG and temperatures up to 413 Fahrenheit or 211 Celsius. But for today, we're just looking at this bit of the Con Edison network. This is around 5th Avenue between the 20th and 21st streets. The pipework here mostly dates back to 1932. However, some parts had been replaced, most notably in 1991 and 2005, around the junction of the 21st Street. The pipework was a 20-inch main line. At a junction of the 21st Street and 5th Avenue, it was at a depth of 9 feet, diving down to 14 feet at the 20th Street and 22nd Street junctions. This downhill dive is very important to the system, which means I need to talk about traps and not that type of trap. So these bits of infrastructure help catch condensation that builds up within the pipes. This can be caused by low ambient temperatures, external pipe contact with water and lack of steam in the system. The downhill gradient of the pipework means that once turned into water, it can flow via the use of gravity down to a trap where it is taken out of the system. You see, built up water in the steam system is bad. It can invite rust reduce system efficiency and can cause things called water hammers where steam gets trapped inside water which can release shockwaves in the pipework when they collapse. But hint hint, we'll look into this a little bit later on in the video. Now, to prevent condensate from forming, in the first place the pipework is covered with insulation. And being old, what do you think they used? Of course it was the early mid 20th century go-to carcinogen, asbestos. The pipes were covered with it, after which it was then entombed in concrete with a 2 inch air gap insulated pipe and housing. Condensation still happens though, hence the traps installed in the network. If water infiltrates to the outside of the pipe, it is drained off to the sewer using drainage sections. However, this is very important that it is maintained. Unfortunately, the 86 odd years old life subterranean had taken its toll on some of the sections not allowing water to drain off and rusting through, allowing water to sit between the pipe and the insulation. So, placed around the network are things called anchors. These are supports that are welded to the steam main that restrict thermal expansion of the steam main pipe. This is because the pipes expand and contract with the heat of the steam. You have to limit this, otherwise, well, it wouldn't be good. But that is enough background for today's video. Let's move on to the next section. The disaster. It is the 19th of July 2018 and sensors at the 22nd Street and 5th Avenue upper trap inlet 
has dropped from 360 degrees Fahrenheit to 351 degrees. This was between 4.30 in the morning and 5 in the morning. However, this modest temperature wasn't picked up by operators, but it was a hint of something that was very bad to come. This was that the steam was cooling. Thus, some of it was condensing within the main. At approximately 6.37, residents and workers discovered large amounts of water flooding in the basements of 135 Fifth Avenue and 137 Fifth Avenue. This was very strange. However, at the same time, just outside, the roadway had erupted out into a pillar of boiling hot steam. Debris crashed out of the surrounding area. As the steam rose to above the buildings that lined Fifth Avenue, pressure for the steam main dropped at 6.40 a.m. Con Edison first responders were sent to the rupture site at 6.42 a.m., arriving at 6.50. Needless to say, the massive plume also garnered multiple 911 calls as the surrounding area was battered with mud, concrete, asphalt and iron shrapnel shards. Within 30 minutes of the release, Con Edison informed the city of the unfolding disaster. Police set up a cordon around the blast area, stopping foot and vehicular traffic from going anywhere near the opening. The steam continued to blast out of the crater it had created, until Con Edison mechanics were able to partially isolate the main by 7.34. This reduced the release, but some steam was still being expelled. Steam would continue to be released for another two hours until Con Edison staff isolated a further seven valves. Five people were treated for minor injuries, which means luckily that no one died. But first, responders would have to deal with one big old headache. That was due to the pipe's age, meaning it was insulated with the asbestos, which had been blasted all around the rupture location and lifted up into the air on top of that steam plume. A hot zone around the rupture crater was set up. This was a pretty large area from the 19th Street to just past 21st Street. Being in this area meant that you had to be evacuated. This effectively forced everyone from 49 buildings due to the potential asbestos contamination or exposure prevalent. This displaced as many as 500 people from being in their homes from between a few days to several weeks as their buildings were cleared for any contamination. Samples were taken of the air and debris and one sample was found to be 1.5% asbestos. This was enough to set off the disaster zone as an asbestos cleanup site. This required proper PPE for anyone approaching the epicenter of the rupture. During the aftermath, thousands of samples were taken. Some showed elevated levels and others showed lower levels. Facades for multiple buildings around the 5th Avenue between the 19th and 21st Street had to be scrubbed due to the risk of asbestos contamination. The cost of the cleanup would be in excess of $7 million, but this was not a full cost. The disaster affected local gas, water and electricity supplies. By mid-August, relative normal had finally fallen on the disaster site, but as the cleanup was undertaken, the investigators descended. The investigation. The ruptured part of the main was excavated and was taken for meteorological analysis. It was found to have ruptured along its seam on the underside of the pipe, basically here. Inspection of the pipe showed significant thinning of the walls due to corrosion, which understandably had been weakened to such a point that it couldn't handle the pressure. But they don't just randomly fail. Instead, investigators were thinking more along the lines of a pressure spike to have caused the failure. Which brings us into the theory of a water hammer. So the disaster would evoke a lot of similarities to the 2007 steam disaster, which took the life of one passerby. But although being a steam pipe explosion caused by a water hammer, there were a few key differences. That is, of the rain, or lack of, in the July 19th disaster, which is what was the cause of the water hammer back in 2007, where heavy rainfall had seeped into the housing causing the steam inside the main to condensate and create the water hammer. So what happened in 2018? If the pipework housing hadn't flooded due to rainfall, how did the steam condense enough to create steam voids? Well, the finger of blame would be pointed at the housing's drainage system. As I mentioned before, moisture can build up within the steam main housing. 
Inspections on the local pumps responsible for removing excess water found that one of the two had failed. A couple of days before the disaster, they had been inspected and were both working as they should have been. This leads to the theory that the failed pump had allowed the water to accumulate. On top of this, it was found that a nearby abandoned manhole had also created a blockage for water to drain off. When it was abandoned, Con Edison did not modify it to allow the water to drain off, as noted in a New York State Department of Public Service technical report. Con Edison did not install a means of allowing drainage to flow through the housing into the manhole vaults at 20th Street and 5th Avenue, where the water could be removed. All of this created a situation where moisture could build up around the steam main, in enough of a volume but it could reduce the temperature within the main, thus opening up the risk of a water hammer. But this was not just any ordinary water hammer. Investigators theorised that it was two hammers at one time, one at each end of the pipe, formed by a sub called condensation. These created steam voids that collapsed around the same time. This pushed the two slugs of water into one another, causing a localised severe overpressure event. But why, you ask? Well, investigators found no damage to the nearby expansion joint, which would have happened in the event of a single water hammer. It was a freak event, caused by a whole lot of neglect in a very aging, decrepit steam network. The disaster would result in multiple recommendations to Con Edison. Kind of surprising due to the amount of experience they apparently had in running the system. But hey, life is just one great lesson, I suppose. So that's my video on the 2018 steam explosion. It's going to be a two on my disaster scale. This I've got for my root cause analysis card. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments below. This is Plenty of Foot Production. All videos on the channel are Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike licensed. Plenty of videos produced by John in a currently quite warm corner of Southern London, UK. And all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching. And Mr. Music, can you play us out, please?